Our top story at this hour, former JDU chief and senior RGD leader as well as Union Minister Sharad Yadav has died. It truly is, an end, is the end of an era in Indian politics. He was 75 years of age and he has died due to age-related complications. I'm joined at this hour by my colleague Sanket Upadhyay. Sanket, um, it truly is the end of an era in, when, when we talk about politics of socialism in India. Yes, and uh, you know, the socialist politics uh, in the country has uh, seen the loss of uh, uh, some very big icons like uh, Ram Vilas Paswan, Mulayam Singh Yadav, and now even Sharad Yadav. Uh, he was uh, battling a lot of illness also, uh, and because of which he had lost a lot of weight. But uh, Sharad Yadav boasts of uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, political firsts and many political achievements. He has had various portfolios uh, in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government between 99 and 2004. In 2003, he became the president of Janata Dal United. He was also the convener of the National Democratic Alliance, the NDA. Uh, he then was elevated to the Rajya Sabha when he lost uh, in 2004. Uh, in 2009, Sharad Yadav was again elected to the Lok Sabha from Madhepura. But after the JDU's defeat in the 2014 general elections, uh, Sharad Yadav's relationship with uh, Nitish Kumar was strained. And in 2017, he was sacked also from the JDU, his own party. Uh, he was the president of this party and he was sacked by Nitish Kumar. And then later he formed his own party and then merged his party with the Rashti Janta Dal, that is Lalu Prasad Yadav's party. Uh, his daughter is in the Congress party right now. Uh, lots of uh, comments are now pouring in uh, from the Prime Minister who says that he's pained by the passing away of uh, Sharad Yadav. Uh, the Prime Minister says in his long years in public life, he distinguished himself as MP and Minister. He was greatly inspired by Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia's ideals. And the Prime Minister says, I will always cherish our interactions. Condolences to his family and admirers, Om Shanti. Many comments coming in from uh, mm -hmm. the socialist uh, uh, parties as well. Uh, Ram Kirpal Yadav, Nisa Bharti. Uh, even uh, Tejasvi Yadav, who is the Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar, saying that Mandal Matiha, uh, given the fact that he had a very crucial role uh, in furthering the message of the Mandal Commission and, uh, you know, social equality, Rashtri Janta Dal Ke Varisht Neta, Mahan Samajwadi Neta, Mere Abhibhavak, which is my mentor, Adarnia Sharad Yadav Ji Ke Nidhan Ki Khabar Se, Mein Dukhi Hoon, so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these condolence messages are now pouring in. Even Harish Rawat of the Congress Party. Right. We are also joined by Chirag Paswan. He is the president of Lok Janshakti Party. Thank you very much, Chirag, for joining us at this hour. Uh, well and truly, it is a loss for uh, socialism politics. And uh, where does this politics head from here? Of course, it is a loss for the Indian politics, but for me, it's more of a personal loss right now. I mean, he was uh, he was like my father, and today, actually, I'm feeling the same as what I felt when I lost my father. So, yes, I mean, our relationship goes way back, you know. I mean, I remember playing as a child on his lap. Uh, my father, him, both of them, they were like one of the best friends. They were really close to each other. Our family has been very close. My mother, their family, they've been very close. So, I mean, uh, this is a huge, huge personal loss and needless to say, a huge loss in Indian politics. Well, uh, Chirag, tell us uh, what happens uh, after this. Uh, your father is no more, he is no more. And the one we see on our screen, Lalu Ji, He's, Laluji is the only one who's left in that generation of politicians who took socialism forward. One after the other, I mean, we are losing our elders. and But then, yes, I mean, uh, we are there because of them. And uh, all I wish, hope and pray that they give us the strength uh, that, that, that we can uh, follow their footsteps, whatever that they have taught us. Uh, we can continue uh, taking their vision, uh, taking inspiration from them and continue whatever that they have taught us. What are the uh, couple of biggest learnings that you've had from uh, Sharat Yadav? No compromise at all, no matter what the situation was. 
I mean, towards his last days, also, you know, I I met him almost one and a half, two months back. You know, uh, there were few issues with his house, and you know, he was to vacate it and stuff. And uh, and that was the time that even I was also going through a similar scenario when I was thrown out of my house. So so we were just chatting about it, and that time also, you know, one thing was so clear that uh, he was not ready to make any kind of uh, compromises. uh for any uh, uh uh for anything else in return so yes i mean this is one thing that we the younger lot needs to learn from him uh is that no matter what never ever compromise with your ideologies never ever compromise uh, that's the major learning from him thank you very much chirag paswan for joining us uh, at this hour Moving on major action has been recommended in the Kanjawala case by special CP Shalini Singh who has submitted her report to the Ministry of Home Affairs the report finds a personnel of three PCRs and two police pickets guilty of negligence the policemen present in the PCR van deployed at the time of the incident should be suspended with immediate effect says her report those posted in the police picket did not fulfill their responsibility they should be suspended with immediate effect too her report says instructions there are instructions to give show cause notice to district police in charge in joshimat authorities started dismantling two multi story hotels deemed unsafe after the soil shifting the process resumed after a revised compensation deal for residents as hundreds protested saying they were not being paid enough compensation the cm also held a meeting with the locals and experts on compensation rates saying the initial amount of 1.5 lakh rupees to the affected families was just a temporary measure Cranes helping empty out these two Joshi Mart hotels that are dangerously tilting towards each other, as their dismantling finally started today, after the hotel owners agreed to the government's offer of enhanced compensation. It will take a full week for the hotels in a town facing a massive land subsidence crisis to be brought down. Workers using cutters will dismantle the hotels manually. The human cost of the Joshi Mart crisis and the loss of homes deemed unfit by the administration have been too much to bear for people like 45-year-old Solochna. A daily wager whose children crush stones for a living. बच्चे बेरोजगार हैं दूसरों के गांव में जाके क्या हम रोजगार कर सकेंगे पत्थर फोड़ते हैं मेरे बच्चे तब खाते हैं हम खाना मैं लकड़ी बेचती हूँ घास बेचती हूँ तब अपना गुजारा करते हैं अपने गांव में तो चल जाता है गुजारा दूसरों के गांव में चले जाएगा गुजारा नहीं चलेगा भैया हम हमारे तो कोई समझ में नहीं आ रही हम क्या करें कहाँ जाए बट हाउ बिग इज द लैंड सब्सिडेंस डैमेज इन जोशी मठ The Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Dhami told NDTV today that a massive 25 percent or one fourth of buildings in the hill town are damaged. भाग्य से कहिए कि यहाँ पर आपदा आई है और लगभग 6-700 मकान हमारे उस आपदा के प्रभाव में आए हैं, आपदा ग्रस्त हुए हैं, कहीं नुकसान हुआ है। लेकिन चूंकि ये जो परसेंटेज है वो 20-25 परसेंट है पूरे जोशीमट का। Another big worry, saving the crucial army base in Joshimat and the highway that leads to the border with China. The army chief today said over 25 military installations in and around Joshimat have sustained medium to minor damage and that some troops have been relocated from areas surrounding Joshimat. Takriban 25 se 28 wahan pe jo buildings hai usme kuch tarah se minor cracks paayi gayi hai jiske phalsvarup हमने वहाँ के इन यूनिट्स को या जवानों को कहीं टेम्पररीली रिलोकेट किया है डिसमेंटलिंग ऑफ दीज टू होटल्स इज अंडर वे बट इट विल टेक सेवन डेज एंड इन दीज सेवन डेज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन विल बी ऑन इट्स टोर्स बिकॉज इट हैज स्टार्टेड रेनिंग इन जोशी मठ एंड फोकास्ट ऑफ स्नोफॉल इज ऑल्सो देर 
which will affect the rescue ops and experts are suspecting it may increase land subsidence. In Joshimat with Pawan Kumar Saurabh Shukla for NDTV. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's security, the highest in the country, was breached on Thursday during his roadshow in Karnataka's Hubli by a teenager. This is the second breach in the PM's security in just over a year. In January 2021, while on his way to address a political rally in Punjab, the PM was stuck on a flyover in Punjab's Patenda for around 20 minutes. A big security breach at Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Karnataka Roadshow. When this team carrying a garland and apparently trying to felicitate Prime Minister jumped onto the road suddenly and managed to get within an arm's length of him. He was intercepted at the last minute and whisked away by the Prime Minister's security. The Prime Minister accepted the garland and kept it on the roof of his SUV. It is not known yet how the team managed to get so close to the Prime Minister in an area that is expected to be thoroughly sanitized. This is not a security breach. He went forward to give the garland. He's simply a fan. The Prime Minister has a five-layer security and the outermost layer of the security is the responsibility of the state police. But this was somehow a slip-up. Last year, this security breach in Punjab, where the Prime Minister was caught in traffic on a flyover in Punjab, while on his way to address a political rally, had caused a major political conflict between the BJP and the then ruling Congress, and the matter reached the Supreme Court. As the Bombay ruled BJP government is battling, strong allegations of corruption and in the poll bound state of Karnataka we are looking at top BJP leaders from Delhi making visits back to back here in the state of Karnataka. The latest of course is Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It was just about last week we went on to see Home Minister Amit Shah and then JP Nadda as well. So this is going to continue is what we hear from the top BJP sources. Also one major reason being trying to reinforce that confidence in the people of Karnataka, only reason being because there is a strong anti-incumbency wave against the BJP government. In Bengaluru with Kumar Srija for NDTV. After the targeted killings in Rajori, Union Home Minister Amit Shah is visiting the Jammu and Kashmir district on Friday. Jammu BJP leaders had highlighted concerns of locals when they met Shah earlier this week. The Home Minister would be visiting victims in Dangri village in afternoon and will really help us to boost morale of our cadres, a senior BJP leader told NDTV from Jammu and Kashmir. According to him, Amit Shah will reassure locals about their safety. After 12 days, uh, attackers appear to be still at large because no one has been tracked down so far. So Home Minister Amit Shah is personally coming, visiting and meeting the victim families tomorrow. He is expected to meet all the three families who have lost their seven members in going to minors in those horrible terror attacks when the Hindu families were targeted. It was a targeted attack uh, when militants barged into their homes on 1st January and then in um, kill, um, uh, you know, first four people. Then next morning there were ID blasts and two more people, minors were killed and, and a later one injured has died. So since then massive operations have been going on in the area but they could not, security force could not track down the uh, attackers, Home Ministry had put the police force and other agencies on, on, on notice to deliver and, and uh, the, the displeasure was conveyed why it is not been, they have not been tracked down. So Home Minister himself reaching the year because it is just, you know, within a little over two months, it would be the second visit of Home Minister, uh, the other three months to Jammu and Kashmir and also Rajori where he actually in the first week of October, he addressed a major rally in the same town of Rajori, where he is going to condole with these deaths and assure people that, look, whatever has happened has happened. Okay. We'll ensure mm -hmm. back down the attackers. But on the ground, what government has done so far today, right. um, started mass arming of villagers as part of the VDC groups. Hmm. And so uh, we have to see what Home Minister will say tomorrow. But people have been very, very angry. How come mm -hmm. innocent people become such a target? 
for these terror attacks and the attackers are still at large even after 20 days. Sachin Pilot now plans to hit the ground running with just about 10 months to go into the next election. It's clear aim at keeping the euphoria after the Bharat Joro Yatra going. The Yatra ends on the 26th of January. After that, Pilot is expected to participate in the Haat Se Haat Joro Abhiyan. Uh, sources close to Pilot have said he is using that as a mandate to go back to the people. However, sources have denied that this is a challenge to the leadership, but say Sachin Pilot, who believes firmly that Rajasthan is his Karmbhumi, wants to remain politically active in the state, especially since the BJP is already on the roll with the Bharat Joro Yatra. My colleague Harsha Kubari Singh joins me. Uh, Harsha, what is the significance of Sachin Pilot's uh, Yatra? Well, I think, um, you know, uh, he is very keen to, um, you know, be seen as relevant in the politics of Rajasthan and they're now just 10 min months to go. And as uh, the chief minister gets busy with his big ticket budget, because remember in the Bharat Joro Yatra also he's made that announcement about giving gas cylinders, a subsidy from gas cylinders uh, to people and, you know, rising prices of gas cylinders is definitely an issue. So, you know, while the government is very keen to project, Ashok Gehloth himself is very keen to project his schemes, which have been quite successful, the Chiranjeevi Yojana, you know, even the subsidy on cylinders, you know, things like that. So to remain politically relevant, it's not just a counter to the BJP, but also to gain his own space in the party that he's doing this uh, outreach, especially to youngsters and farmers, because that's the kind of uh, vote bank that can perhaps to the Congress. Also, he wants to ride the waves that have been generated after the Bharat Joro Yatra, especially in eastern Rajasthan, because it has received a good response there. Uh, so uh, these are the political calculations that appear to be uh, behind uh, Sachin Pilot's mass contact program that he's launching from the 16th of January. Army Chief General Manoj Pandey has said that the situation along the northern borders with China is under control but still remains unpredictable. He also stressed on the need to remain alert, saying the ceasefire has held well on the Pakistan border, but the neighbor's support to terror infrastructure and terror groups was still persistent. Vishnu Shom reports. Our northern borders with China are stable but remain unpredictable. And there's been a noticeable build-up of Chinese forces in the eastern sector. The key message of the army chief at his annual press Assam conference. Software. I shall take the northern borders first. I would say the situation is stable and under control, yet unpredictable. Significantly, India has now completed the process of strategic rebalancing. In other words, positioning enough soldiers on the China front and ensuring that they are completely supported to wage war if required. For now, five of seven key issues linked to disengagement of Chinese soldiers in Ladakh have been addressed and more military and diplomatic talks continue. You are aware of the talks, ongoing talks, wherein we have been able to resolve five out of the seven issues that were on the table. And uh, we are continuing to talk both at the diplomatic as well as the military level. In terms of our preparedness levels, they remain of a very high standard. We have adequate forces, we have adequate reserves in each of our sectors to be able to effectively deal with any situation or contingency. You are also aware of the strategic reorientation or the rebalancing that we undertook some time back. Uh, I must mention that it is complete in uh, every respect. In a first, the army chief said women in the force would be free to join artillery regiments. This is the induction of women in combat roles and a major step forward in integrating women into the force in critical roles. Commissioning of women officers in the regiment of artillery. Now this is something which we have decided we must do and this proposal has been forwarded to the government and we hope that this will be accepted. The General also spoke about disruptive new technology in military warfare evidenced by what we are seeing in Ukraine. The Army is looking closely at what weaponry it will field in the future. Vishnu Shom for NDTV.